In this video, I'm going to be restoring a GTX 560 I got from eBay. Under the assumption it had a driver's issue, it was extremely unstable on Windows 10. And getting at home, it was pretty unstable. It booted up for the first time, no problem, but after about 10 minutes of sitting on the desktop, it just crashed. I'm going to put a picture up on the screen of the blue screen here. It was some weird driver issue. I've never seen that error before on a blue screen of death. But uh, after I saw that and uh, cleaning it out, the heat sinks were just plugged full of dust. Like I'm talking, you look down through the fan and instead of seeing gray fins, it was just a solid block of gray. It, that's how plugged it was with dust. So uh, I knew this poor thing lived a very hot life and it more than likely overheated from the artifacts on the boot screen of death. So the first thing I did was get it broken down. As you can see me doing here, I'm disassembling the graphics card. One thing that really irritated me about the GTX 560 was but you can't get the plastic shroud off of the heatsink without having to take the entire cooler off the car. Now I have a GTX 480, y'all might have seen in a previous video of mine, making fun of it. But it's really nice that you can pop the plastic shroud off to get to the fan and the heatsink a lot easier than the 560 here. But anyways, after that I got it all broken down. I'm making sure it's really clean on the inside, cleaning the plastic's really good just because I'm sort of OCD about when I get new computer hardware, especially from somebody else's house, and it's not my dust, I really want to get it really clean, especially so it doesn't kick up any extra dust up in my main computer, you know, just so I avoid having to clean it out more often than I already do, but uh, after I got it all cleaned out, I'm going to making sure the GPU is really clean because when you reflow a graphics card or any VGA chip at that matter you always want to make sure it's spotless on top or around and at least I like to make sure it inch all the way around the GPU or the VGA chip whatever you're trying to reflow is spotless to make sure it doesn't interfere with any of uh, the, the forces with the solder Make sure it doesn't interfere with anything. Basically, you want a nice flat surface. Make sure it's something that can take that kind of heat because I'm going to be using a heat gun and a little bit of that taxi flux you can see me putting on right now. And uh, I got a heat gun where it's, it's got a low and a high. The low setting is 750 degrees Fahrenheit, which I believe is either 450 degrees celsius or 475 degrees celsius and then the high setting is 1150 degrees fahrenheit or 700 degrees celsius i believe and i'm going to be using the low setting so low airflow 700 degrees and a clockwise um, motion for about seven or eight minutes and uh, you always want to keep that heat moving because if you let it sit there for too long, you get a really hot spot and you can either A, burn out something else on the board like a memory chip that's close to the GPU. You could burn out the GPU by getting one side way too hot and another not too, or it's still cold. And uh, you can also stress the GPU in weird ways so it's not going to reflow properly. So you want to keep that heat moving around and uh, you just want to put enough flux on the GPU just enough to get underneath the chip that's it I didn't want to put too much on there because the flux is a pain in the butt to clean off since it's really tacky and I didn't want it all over the graphics card So I'm just moving in a clockwise manner here. And 
and after the reflow, I let it sit for about 30 to 45 minutes to make sure it fully cooled down. I didn't want to cool it down too rapidly and cause thermal stresses underneath the chip again and cause that solder to crack, so I don't want to do this again. It's already a crap shoot enough doing it one time, you don't want to do it twice. So I just replaced the thermal, or put new thermal paste on there, because you know you don't want to run it dry, then it really will overheat. And uh, putting on the cooler, you want to go in a crisscross manner, or tightening it down and do sort of like putting lug nuts on a car to make sure you get even pressure um, over the entire GPU. Especially if it's an exposed die, you really want to put even pressure all the way across the GPU. Because if you put too much pressure in, like, say, I tighten one of the corners too much, you can crack or chip the die, and after that, you're basically screwed. Nothing can even fix that other than buying a new one. So, uh, especially like an IHS, you really don't have to worry about that, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't want uh, uneven pressure points on the GPU anyways, because that can affect the solder underneath the chip. And I want the best chance this graphics card has got so it works. You know, I'm just booting into Windows 10 here. And you know Windows 10, they always got to pick the most inconvenient time to update the system. I don't know why they have to do this, but every time, without a doubt, Either when I'm troubleshooting hardware or trying to figure something out, it's got to update right now and I'm troubleshooting something. Now I'm installing the drivers for the GTX 560. And up until this point, I was still pretty skeptical because I did get this far before. And it was somewhat stable. Like it was letting me install the drivers for the GTX 560. But uh, usually in between installing or removing the previous driver installation, it would crash, blue screen, or error out in some weird way. And some of these blue screens, I've never seen these errors before. But uh, the driver install went through, no problem, no hitches, no stutters, nothing like that. It was completely 100% stable. The thermals were a little high at first, but that's just because I was I had it in the case of hardly any airflow, and the stock fan curve was um, it was like 40% up until it got like 60 degrees C, which for a nice silent operation that's nice. But I like to I'm pretty OCD about temperature. I like to have it running really cool so it lasts longer. But uh, I just put this same fan curve I got from my GTX 480 and it barely broke 150 degrees Fahrenheit while I was editing this video I played StarCraft 2 on it, StarCraft 1, a couple other games to really see if the card is completely stable I tried different clock speeds, voltages, stuff like that the card was 100% stable the whole time which, uh, which is really good because I was very skeptical going into this fix. Like uh, the videos I watched on YouTube, most of them were saying either this is a last stitch effort fix, it's not a guaranteed fix, it's not a permanent fix, it's usually a temporary fix. And that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the car just crapping out eventually, which is a possibility, but you never know. But uh, anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this learning experience for me, and uh, please consider subscribing to my channel, I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a great day.